My 36 female, sister 33, and her boyfriend recently moved to a town next to mine. I was excited, as we'll be able to see more of each other now. Nearby, there's a downtown center with a lot of shopping, restaurants, galleries, etc. There is one upscale restaurant that both my husband and I love. A dinner for two will run you about $200 to $250, so it's not a place we frequently go. However, my sister called me last week and invited us out to dinner with them at the restaurant last night. I reminded her it was an upscale place and to look at the menu beforehand because they're pricey and we can go somewhere else. There are tons of other great places. She said they still wanted to go. We hadn't been there in a while, so we accepted. Dinner was great. At the end of the meal, my sister excuses herself to the bathroom, and when she doesn't come back relatively soon, her boyfriend goes to find her. After a while, neither of them comes back. We go to check for them, and they're gone. I call and text her, and she texts back that they've left, but thanks for dinner. It was just as amazing as you said it would be. I asked her what she meant, but no response. I texted again, asking if she really just stuck us with the bill, and no response. I then texted that I never agreed to pay for them, and she had 30 minutes to come back to the restaurant, or I'd give the restaurant all her information, and they'll likely involve the police. No response. At the 30-minute mark, I called and texted and got no response, so I stayed true to my word. I paid for mine and my husband's portion and gave all her information to the manager for their portion and then left. The next day she called me back, upset that she's been getting calls from the restaurant, asking her to come pay or they'll contact the police. I said I was not surprised since she skipped out on her bill. She said she thought I was paying the tab since I've paid for our dinners in the past. I have paid for her plus me only dinners where the total tab was $60 max. I said this was different than the other times we met for dinner. This was all four of us and at an upscale restaurant and I was not paying the $450 tab and she had to cover her portion. I reminded her that she invited us out and chose the restaurant. I specifically asked if she wanted to go somewhere else, but she was the one who insisted on going to this restaurant. I never agreed to pay for everyone. She then said she thought I'd pay, but when I asked the waiter for separate checks, she realized I wasn't and left for the bathroom, planning to ditch. I said that since the restaurant hadn't contacted the police yet, all she had to do was go in and pay, and it would be settled. She didn't want to do that because it would be too embarrassing and asked me to cover it. I again said no and that she had to take care of it. Our family has gotten involved and I'm being pressured to just pay the bill. Am I the idiot if I don't and let the restaurant call the police? I honestly would have paid the tab if she had said something to me when the bill came. I would have been royally angry, but I would have paid. But since she knowingly ditched, I do not want to pay up. Not the idiot. Your sister and her boyfriend's behavior was so gross. It is commonly understood that the assumption is that the bill will be split unless previously agreed that one person is paying or the person who invited people pays. But you don't ask someone and stick them with the whole bill. Holy crow, your sister has some major balls to do that to you. Huh? She literally left you at the restaurant and she's embarrassed? She could call the restaurant and pay over the phone if she's too embarrassed to go there. There's no excuse that she can give not to pay, unless since this seemed to be planned, she has no money or credit. Honestly, OP, there is no point in treating her as a sister when she doesn't see or treat you like one. And she really got your family involved so she could boo-hoo a tantrum about having to pay her own bill? Heck no. Tell them that they're welcome to pay for it themselves if they feel so strongly about it and give them the restaurant's number. She knows what she was trying to do. It just didn't go her way. Too bad. Update. I've always paid for my sisters and my dinners in the past. Just the two of us. She's never really been this terrible, but she has almost always found a way to bring my salary into conversations. So this event really made me feel like a piggy bank and not a sister, which is the most upsetting thing ever. I am currently 26 weeks pregnant. I am a stay-at-home wife and my husband works in an advertising agency. Today I suggested that we go out on a drive 
because I felt suffocated from staying home all day. However, he was not in a mood to drive because apparently it felt more like a chore than relaxing and enjoyable to him. He had been assigned a work project for which he had to travel for nearly an hour for the past few weeks. He suggested that we go for a walk or something instead, since I just wanted to get out of the house for a while. He explained to me that he had already had a bad day at work and he was not in a mood to drive. However, I refused because I felt tired from the pregnancy and didn't want to walk. Finally, I managed to convince him to drive me somewhere. During the drive, I tried to make conversation to break the ice as he was looking grumpy. He suddenly snapped and told me that I got the ride I wanted so badly and said I should enjoy it instead of annoying him even more. He said that he was already irritated because of being forced to drive and told me that he was no longer interested in conversation with me. I was super hurt by his tone and didn't speak for the rest of the drive. He didn't even eat the dinner I prepared and just went to bed when we got home. I feel terrible about forcing him even after he said no to the drive. Maybe I should have just compromised with the walk instead of forcing him to drive. Am I the idiot? You are the idiot. It's an incredible burden to be in a relationship with someone who can't leave the house on their own. You claim you were feeling suffocated, but why is it someone else's problem to fix? It's unlikely any randomly selected human can handle the burden of supporting a whole family financially and being responsible for your happiness on such a fundamental level. You are the idiot. Dude didn't want to drive. He already did an hour commute. And honestly, driving isn't a fun bonding activity in my opinion. You can't relax. You have to focus, etc., etc., constantly. It's only pleasurable for the one who isn't driving 90% of the time. Apologize to him and make it up to him somehow. You should have gone for a walk, which was healthier and a fair compromise. It didn't have to be long and would have both gotten you out of the house and helped him relax. You saw he was grumpy during the drive. You knew he had been driving for extended periods already. You should have read the room and understood that he didn't need the ice broken. He needed you to appreciate what he was doing for you and just quietly enjoyed the drive. Being pregnant doesn't mean you stop considering your partner's needs. I am getting married and my 19 year old sister is being ridiculous. She is very jealous of the attention my fiancé is getting and trying to upstage her and compete. This all started when I proposed. I saved for a while because my fiancé is a gorgeous girl and I wanted the ring to be really special. When we first saw my mom, she showed it off and my sister got quiet and then left the room for a while. She didn't compliment it or say congratulations. At the next gathering with extended family, the ring got much attention and my sister seemed sad. My mom ended up buying her a diamond bracelet with some sapphires. When I commented, my mom said it just seemed fair because she has my stepdad to buy her jewelry, my fiancé has me, and my sister has no one. Then my fiancé invited them both wedding dress shopping. She said my sister was sulky at the appointment and kept saying she didn't feel good and laying her head on my mom. My fiancé called my mom at some point to talk about colors and the family coordinating and my mom said my sister already had a dress because she couldn't wait and showed us a very sparkly, very beaded lavender gown. My fiancé told me she's familiar with that designer and my mom dropped some serious cash. At the bridal shower, my sister was sulky again and refused to eat. So my mom took her and left to buy her frozen yogurt because she was dizzy. The final straw was the bachelorette party. My sister and mom were invited to the dinner before the big party and my sister wanted a $200 lobster. My mom told her that was rude since my future mother-in-law was paying and then asked my mother-in-law if it would be okay if she, my mom, paid for my sister's dinner and bought her the lobster. The bridesmaids were lightly teasing my sister about how she would have to be my fiance's slave the day of and my mom snapped at them very harshly that my sister doesn't have to do a thing. My sister ended up yelling that it was dumb and that we're having so many parties, engagement, shower, bachelorette, and wedding. So pretty standard, I think. She said we don't need all of those parties and it's just an excuse for attention. My fiance was hurt and shocked. I just found out my mom threw a party for my sister the weekend after the bachelorette. 
She rented a beach house for my sister and her friends and paid for hair and makeup. To me, that is crazy. I called my mom and we got into it. I told her that she was enabling my sister's toxic jealousy and if she kept it up, she wouldn't be invited to the wedding. My mom didn't say much but sent me an angry text about how she handed me so much and no one ever did that for her. She worked for her money and I would not tell her what to do with it. She can light it on fire if she wants. I haven't responded. She also thinks this is fine and normal because my sister is going through a breakup. So, am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Your mom is right, and she can spend her money how she wishes. However, she clearly chooses to use the money to buy love from your sister. Your sister throws temper tantrums because things are not about her, and your mom enables it, 100%. I wouldn't invite them to the wedding because I guarantee your sister will pout and sulk until she gets whatever she's after, and your mom will ignore your day and focus on your sister. You and your other half deserve to have the day be about you, and not a 19-year-old who was never taught to share the spotlight. Are you sure your sister's 19? Because she's acting like she's 9. Will she throw a tantrum to get your mom to buy her a white dress to wear? I wonder what your sister's going to get after your wedding party. Is it going to be daddy walking her down the aisle and giving her away to a creme brulee? Not the idiot. It is ridiculous that mommy is simulating a proposal all the way to the wedding for a spoiled golden child. My advice? Families get crazy around weddings. This wedding is about you and your fiancé only. I would personally not allow your mom or sister near the bride on the wedding day and set boundaries ASAP. Everyone's the idiot here. Your mother is right. She can do what she likes with her money. Why were the bridesmaids saying your sister must be your fiancé's slave during the wedding? Way to pour gasoline onto a fire. If your sister isn't a bridesmaid, why would they say this? And why does it matter that your mother bought your sister a nice dress for the wedding? No shade, but is this amount of parties normal? Where I am, it's literally hen slash stag do, and you get married. In any case, yes, you are going over the top. My wife is in the habit of always putting on makeup whenever she has to go outside. In the three years we've been married, I've never seen her leave the house without makeup on. Even if she had to go to the neighbor's house, she'd still put on her makeup. I've spoken to her about this many times as I find it absurd, but the only answer I get from her is that she just likes to take extra care of the way she looks. It gets even more frustrating whenever our plans are delayed because she spends so much time on her makeup. Yesterday, my wife had to go to the supermarket and asked me to take her there. She's too nervous to drive herself ever since she had a minor traffic accident over a year ago, so I have to drive her around. I had a lot of work piled up for that day, and I didn't want to be disturbed when I was in the middle of it, so I said that we'd have to go right then and return within an hour. She said okay and sat down to put on her makeup. I was angry when I saw that and told her we had to hurry, since I knew she'd take more than 40 minutes at the supermarket, and the drive to the supermarket could take anywhere between 5 and 10 minutes. Five minutes went by and she was still not ready and she said she was putting on the finishing touches. That's when I lost it and yelled at her. I said that people didn't give a damn how she looked and that she should stop deluding herself and wasting my time. For a moment she just stared at me. Then she broke down and started sobbing. We didn't go to the supermarket, needless to say. Also, she hasn't been talking to me at all since yesterday. I don't know what to make of the situation. On the one hand, I feel bad for her, but on the other hand, I feel like she was being unreasonable and needed a wake-up call. Am I the idiot? You are the idiot. Imagine putting so much effort into something, only to be told by the person closest to you that no one cares about that effort. That's just cruel, man. Should she have been more considerate of your time? Absolutely, but you handled it in the worst of ways. She shouldn't talk to you until you apologize. I disagree. Everyone's the idiot here. She should be more conscientious of other people's time, and OP should appreciate her effort. Look at the actual event that prompted his outburst. He said he was angry after five minutes, and she said she was nearly finished. That's nothing in makeup time. My ex-wife would say she was nearly finished after five minutes too. History says that means I have another 40 to 50 minutes of waiting around for her to be ready. 
I used to tell her that our departure time for anything was a good 60 to 90 minutes before we actually needed to leave. So we were still late about a third of the time. You are the idiot. I don't know your wife's situation, but I was bullied as a kid for my acne. And as a result, I hardly ever leave the house without makeup because even at 30, I still suffer from it. So your wife might have a deeply rooted reason that impacts her confidence. By telling her nobody cares how she looks, you're telling her that even when she puts on makeup, nobody will notice her in a positive way. I know you don't mean it that way, but that's how I would take it if it was said to me. Everyone's the idiot here. You shouldn't have blown up on your wife. But your wife, though, seems very insecure and seems to have some pretty high anxiety. She can't drive after a minor fender bender a year later. Your wife should consider seeing a therapist. Therapy is good for everyone, so I'm not calling her crazy. It would be good for her to learn how to deal with the last trauma of possible bullying and how to cope with stressful situations practically. I, 35 female, am the owner of a coffee shop. Linda, 23, is one of my employees who joined six months ago. Four months ago, she met my older brother, 37, and they started dating. Ever since they started dating, Linda has acted like she owns the place. She never comes on time and treats my other employees rudely. Every time I scold Linda, I receive a call from my brother telling me not to pester his girlfriend. Recently, I've had enough. She's been neglecting her responsibilities lately. Even after the holiday period ended, she chose not to show up. I called her up today and she told me she didn't feel like coming in. I told her that I'd had enough and that I was finally going to fire her. I told her we only needed diligent employees here and that she was clearly not one of them. Hours later, my brother stormed into my house, cursing and yelling at me for firing his girlfriend. My husband kicked him out of the house and I was honestly so annoyed. My parents think I'm the idiot for firing my brother's girlfriend and for kicking my brother out of our house. Later today, I received a call from my brother who was very angry as Linda had dumped him. He says that he wouldn't have gotten dumped if I had not fired Linda. To a certain degree, that may be true. However, if I hadn't fired Linda, that would have only been disadvantageous for my coffee shop business. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. It looks like she dumped him because he's of no use to her anymore. Firing over the phone isn't fun. It's not significantly different than firing in person. This isn't a breakup. You don't deserve a face-to-face -face chat. Not even every relationship requires that. How you did it doesn't matter. They're just mad you did it at all. Frankly, this was doomed to end badly the moment they hooked up. Is this serious? How could you think you're the idiot for firing an employee who is eating up your dollars, making other employees upset, and causing you aggravation? Tell your brother he can start his own company and put her on the payroll if he wants her to have a job she doesn't deserve to keep. Tell your parents that they should stay out of it unless they want to come in and take her shift and finish jobs she doesn't do. It almost sounds like she got the impression your brother was the owner. Not the idiot. And wait, wait, wait. She's 23 and he's 37? There's a 14-year difference between them, yet they are perfectly matched for how immature they act. Your business is your life, but they need not be a part of it if they can't respect that.